your next reading is asset backed securities uh, let's have a quick overview these are the specific uh, learning outcome statements uh, your asset backed securities reading it covers three specific areas key areas residential mortgage backed securities mortgage pass through securities and collateralized mortgage obligation so let us go through each lvs one by one first explain benefits of securitization for economies and financial markets okay let's take an example let's say this is a financial institution a bank it has a uh, granted a loan auto loan maybe mortgage to the borrower borrower in turns will become the receivable for the originator so this originator can then sell these uh, auto loans these mortgages to a special purpose entity uh, a legal entity that is specifically created to to buy these assets now this special purpose entity will pay the cash to the originator thereby removing the uh, these uh, receivables from the originator's balance sheet now this originator will continue to receive these uh, interest and principal payments from the borrower the originator will in most of the cases deduct its servicing cost and then give the cash to the special purpose entity now special purpose entity based upon these cash flows can further issue securities and that's what we call the asset backed securities because these securities are backed by these transferred assets from the originator now, these securities then may be rated by credit rating agencies because the credit rating of the of these uh, securities may be sometimes higher than the credit rating of the original issuing company and this will further provide much needed liquidity now let's sum it up what is securitization as we have discussed the whole flow it involves transferring of ownership of assets from the original owner to a special legal entity sometimes called the special purpose entity sometimes called uh, the special purpose vehicle and then this entity in return issues asset backed securities backed by these transferred assets so these uh, uh, securitized assets are usually loans receivables mortgages so pooling these assets create asset backed securities now what are the benefits of uh, securitization the first benefit it allows investors in the asset backed securities to have more direct legal claim on loans and portfolios of the receivables investors can access securities matching their specific needs their specific risk return and maturity needs that is good thing for the investors they can uh, accordingly make investments in those abs where that matches their specific return maturity needs so then liquidity it allows for the creation of trade securities with better liquidity and then finally Uh, for the governments it can help governments privatize public assets next lws describes securitization which we have already discussed including the parties involved in the process and the roles they play so there are basically two main parties the first main party is the originator the seller of the collateral uh this party originally owns the pools of assets those receivables mortgages auto loans so on and so forth so so this party owns the pool of assets and then sequentially sells them to the issuer the second party to this arrangement is called the special purpose vehicle or special purpose entity this is the entity that creates a security backed by assets asset backed securities acquired and sells them to the investor then there are th other parties as well called third parties uh, they include lawyers attorneys credit rating agencies underwriters and guarantors okay the next lws says describe typical structures of securitization including credit tranching and time tranching all right so how are securitized products sold there could be a simple structure that may involve just the sale of only 
the one bond class or they could be multiple bond classes uh, that are more common now let us discuss time tranching in in this structure we have multiple bond classes so we may uh, develop some rules that will establish and specify uh, the interest and principal payment distribution mechanism so some classes may receive cash flows earlier and some will receive cash flow later than others so this is called time tranching in credit tranching the asset backed securities will have different exposure to risk that is risk of default of assets so let us consider an abs with the following bond classes we have a senior bond then we have a mezzanine and then the subordinate right so this is how we redistribute risk compared to a single class structure now let's say if there are losses then this subordinate tranche will be the first to absorb any losses and it is also called the first loss tranche until those losses exceed let's say here we have uh, 20 million 70 million and uh, let's say 250 million now in case of subordinate tranche here any losses uh, up to 20 million will be absorbed by this tranche losses above 20 million will be absorbed by the mezzanine tranche and any losses above 70 plus 20 90 million will then hit the senior tranche so this is called credit tranche we'll discuss this in detail as we proceed to our subsequent readings next reading says describe types and uh, characteristics of residential mortgage loans that are typically securitized so what are residential mortgage loans a mortgage loan simply is a is a loan secured by collaterals of real estate in which the borrower under the contract is obligated to make a predetermined series of payments so under this uh, uh, mortgage arrangement the mortgage gives the lender the right to foreclose if the borrower defaults mean if the borrower doesn't pay the the lender can take possession of the property so then uh, the lender can simply sell this property to recover the funds finally loan to value ratio usually the amount of the loan advanced under the mortgage loan is less than the property's purchase price since the borrower makes the down payment so this is called loan to value ratio and the loan to value ratio is normally less than 100% okay next we have uh, characteristics of residential mortgage first interest rate uh usually fixed interest rates are usually fixed but a number of convertible mortgages may have some adjustable rates then amortization means the amount borrowed gradually reduces as as the borrower keeps on making the payment although there are certain interest only mortgages but they are not very uh, common so amortization simply when the borrower is making the payment each payment includes some interest part and the principal part this is called amortization then prepayment options or penalties sometimes if a borrower makes a prepayment so this goes um, against the interest of the issuer so this prepayment option penalties means then if a borrower makes a payment in excess of the scheduled payment then it may involve some penalties then foreclosure we have just discussed uh, lender may repossess the property if the borrower makes a default in the payment and then in order to protect the lender lender rights are outlined to protect their interest in this arrangement so that completes this uh, reading uh, this los to be more specific next is describe types and characteristics of residential mortgage backed securities including mortgage pass through securities and collateralized mortgage obligation and explain the cash flows and risks for each type characteristics of residential mortgage backed securities in the us securities backed by residential mortgages are divided into two groups first the agency rmbs those guaranteed by the federal 
agency these these are guaranteed by the government sponsored entities like freddie mac and the non agency rmbs these are the securities issued by private entities then we have mortgage pass through securities what are they mortgage pass through securities are created by a pool of mortgages and these mortgages then sell this pool sells shares or participation certificates so this pool can consist of uh, several thousands mortgages or just few mortgages so cash flow of such securities the shares and participation certificate it depends on cash flows of the underlying pool of these mortgages and then these payments are made to security holders each month cash flows are usually lower because let's say the cash flow that comes in 100 million but the cash available to these uh, uh, shareholders and this particip participation certificate holders it will be lower maybe to 90 million the differential is in fact the service charges what you call the service and other administrative fee of the mortgages so this remaining 90 million is then distributable to these uh, shareholders and the participation certificate holders okay now these uh, mortgage pass through securities shares this participation certificate the rate on these the coupon rate on these instruments is called the pass through rate and this pass through rate is uh, less than the mortgage rate let's say if it is 5% then the these returns on the overall aggregate mortgages is about 7% why the differential the difference is that this pool of mortgage has to cover some uh, servicing and administrative costs so that's the reason the pass through rate is less than the mortgage rate on the underlying pool of the mortgages and of course the difference goes towards servicing and other fee next define prepayment risk and describe the prepayment risk of mortgage backed securities what is a prepayment risk well un prepayment risk basically is uncertainty that the cash flows will be different from the scheduled cash flows as specified in the loan agreement because the borrowers may alter the payments they may usually take advantage of interest rate movements and they may pay early so there are two types of uh, prepayment risk one is the contraction risk and other is the extension risk contraction risk first let's discuss this the contraction risk is the risk that interest rates decline and when the interest rate decline the homeowners will find this interest rate attractive so they will refinance their their mortgage and at the available lower interest rates so we will receive less payments than expected this is called contraction risk and extension risk to the contrary when the risk where where it involves the risk when interest rate rise the prepayments will be lower than expected because the homeowners they will be reluctant to give up the benefits of of contractual interest rate that is now lower than the the, the prevalent interest rate so these are the risks collectively called the prepayment risk next the measures of prepayment rate a uh, prepayment rate is measured via the single monthly mortality rate and this smm corresponding to the annual rate so prepayment for the month beginning mortgage balance minus scheduled principal repayment so this would help us measure the prepayment risk and remember the ability to forecast this future prepayment rate is a key then there is an entity called the public securities association it uh, offers us a benchmark a common prepayment benchmark called psa benchmark so uh, any number greater than 100 psa that would mean that the prepayments are faster than the standard model in contrast if the psa benchmark is lower than 100 lower than 100 in that case there will be slower prepayments than the standard model next los is describe 
characteristics and risks of commercial mortgage backed securities cmbs uh, what are cmbss they are pool of commercial mortgages in fact they are backed by a pool of commercial mortgages on income producing property and the properties might include uh, apartment buildings office blocks industrial properties shopping centers hotels healthcare facilities so on and so forth remember commercial mortgage backed securities they are non recourse loans what does it mean that the lender can only look to the income producing property only property backing the loan for interest and principal payment and nothing else there are two key indicators of potential credit performance that is loan to value ratio and a debt service coverage ratio debt coverage its service coverage ratio if it is greater than 1 that that would mean that the cash flows from the property are sufficient to cover the debt service we will do the computation related uh, area in our questions moving on to the next lws it says describe types and characteristics of non mortgage asset backed securities including the cash flows and risk of each type non mortgage assets backed security can be broadly classified into two types amortizing assets and non amortizing assets so collateral can either be amortizing or non amortizing when we say amortizing assets we are talking about uh, auto loans personal loans because cash flows are scheduled monthly cash flows are scheduled monthly payments interest payments and scheduled principal payments so it follows a waterfall mechanism a waterfall mechanism is used to distribute the interest and principal received among the investors of these non mortgage asset backed securities then non amortizing assets mean these are the assets not different than amortizing assets these they they do not include the regular principal payments they are they involve credit card receivables so cash flows from the credit cards consists of financial charges interest fees and principal payments and they are distinct cash flows from the amortizing class then we have described collateralized debt obligations including their cash flows risks what are collateralized debt obligations collateralized debt obligation basically it's a security backed by a diversified pool of different types of debt obligations it could involve uh corporate and emerging market bonds structured financial products bank loans and even credit default swaps so collection of these is what gives you a product called the collateralized debt obligation how do they work in a collateralized debt obligation a manager is appointed he will manage the portfolio of assets we create a special purpose vehicle that we discussed in our previous reading and we follow a waterfall structure as you can see here a waterfall structure is used to come up with three tranches that is the senior and mezzanine they are rated and the subordinate or junior tranche that is unrated the proceeds to meet the obligation to the cdo tranches can come from uh, from various coupon interest payments of the underlying pool some maturing assets in the underlying pool or some sale of the assets in the underlying pool 